Hey everyone, today we're going to see how to build a quick and simple MySQL admin panel, which is not only capable of the basic operations like adding new employees and editing their information, updating, deleting. We are also going to cross reference it with another data source I have, Google Sheets, where I have some data here. I'm cross referencing and relating them and retrieving data accordingly. It's going to be fun. But also going to look at how to add validations. So, for example, when I'm adding an employee, I have some validations added so that the email is always an email. If I enter some junk value like this, it's going to stop me. You can see it gives an error message email should contain at the rate and email should end with dot com. Similarly, for absentism, if I try to enter a negative number, it will also throw me an error saying that value should be greater than equal to zero. This is really crucial so that your data can always remain safe and not get corrupted and your operations can run smoothly. So we'll see validations. We'll see how to make CRUD operations, how to cross reference it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Do you stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the video. The first step is to, of course, connect SQL to DroneHQ and let's just get into that. For that, head over to the console, your DroneHQ admin console, head to the connector section. And once that finished loading, you can click on the connector button on the top right to get the screen with a bunch of different connectors. We need MySQL, so click the first one. You'll get this screen over here, which will ask a bunch of different data. Enter a good name like employee database and you need different information where you can get from the developer easily or you can check the site where you're hosting to get the host IP, port, username, password and other details. So once you've done that, test the connection and save it. I already have it saved so you'll be good to go. So I have this employee database connection saved with a bunch of different queries. So the next thing after adding your connection is to set up queries. For that, click the add query button over here you will be greeted with the screen where you can see the schema of your database on the right side with various table names. Um, this is just a dummy table, but the main table I'm working with is my employee data table with various columns. So here's the main section where you write your SQL queries. You can write any standard queries using your general syntax. So for example, select stars from employee data where employee ID equal to a specific ID. This is a typical query you'd write in SQL and of course it's the same thing, it's going to work over here too. One advantage we have over here is we can add variables to make it much more dynamic. So for example, I don't want to always retrieve the details of this particular employee. I want to keep it dynamic. So I'll add a variable called user ID, change the type to integer, give it a test value, say 1000 to itself and a default value. I can set some help text here and if I want it and add it. So now I can remove this 1002 and I can enclose it in double braces to add a variable name, user ID. Now this is a dynamic query which is going to function exactly the same. You can see in the text box in the bottom left where they have told you how to use variables in your queries. The advantage is now I can set the user ID dynamically when I'm running my app so that it becomes such that whichever employee ID the user mentions that particular details will be meant fetched. So I can just give a name for this fetch employee details and I'll be good to go. You can run it, save it and it should work. Let me just run it for a quick example. You can see it's worked. It's retrieved the data. Once you save it, you'll be good to go. So uh, I already have various queries set up. I have a query to fetch employee data to get a particular employee details. This is what you've seen to update, delete and insert. Once you set up these queries, we should be ready for the next step, which is building the UI. This one's the easy step. All you have to do is build the UI by dragging and dropping various controls. So for displaying my employee list, I'm going to use a standard table grid control, really handy and nice. I also need a button to add new devices. If you remember from the intro, let me just quickly change the text in this to add device. Yep. So uh, for displaying the devices, I'm going to use a combination of a list repeat control which is a container 
to display repeated items and I'm going to use a custom list inside this which if you go to the installed section you can find a lot of custom lists you can also build your own controls if you are not satisfied with this using our designer tool and I'm just going to use one and tweak I'm going to use this product list control over here and put it inside this list repeat so it's displaying the list horizontally to fix that you just need to go to the list repeat prop uh, properties and configure what you want so columns on desktop one we can change the other places too to reflect it and uh, yep that is pretty much it we can also change some content uh, some properties on the table grid so I can default selected row let me put it as one I want a detailed view where if I click it I can see the details of the complete records so I'll enable that I'll also add an extra custom app action for updating each row and I'll put show on hover yes and I can change the icon to an edit icon from here and I can also remove the checkbox I don't want the checkbox so I'll remove that because we're not really selecting anything so that is pretty much it I've configured my table I've added controls to make my UI I can change the colors there's near infinite customization options if you explore it I can change colors add whatever controls I want I've similarly built UI for the other screens for add an employee I've dragged and dropped some boxes I have a sample button done nothing else some buttons I've set it to as required so that it makes it impossible to submit without entering data for this for example if you're adding an employee you obviously need an employee id so using the same formula i created a update employee where i kept some fields as read only so that when you're updating employee you don't want to allow to change the employee id itself or the gender maybe and for adding a device again similar function just drag and drop controls i have this radio button control but nothing else so just add and drop controls and uh, change properties and once you're happy with the ui you're ready for the next step this is a preview of how your application looks once you've built the ui it's pretty bare bones nothing has been added yet you can see the table grid is showing no data configured because we haven't done anything the device list is showing the default list with the default values but if we go here and check out the other screens my ad employee you can see that has come out well i can see all my fields with the asterisks and the buttons Similarly, add device also looks nice. My radio button and other button seems to be working well. And update employee also has my read only fields and everything looks good. So we're done with the bare bones of our application. It's time to move on to the next step and see how to proceed further. So we have our queries ready. We have our UI built. All that's left to do now is to bind the data from our SQL database using the queries to our controls we've just added. So this is really simple to bind the data to absolutely any control. All you have to do is click on that control and head over to this bind data icon over here where you have several methods to bind the data. We are going to use the connectors because we have a MySQL connector ready, which we built in the first step. So let me just choose a connector and select my connector. Choose the connector you've added in the custom database connectors choose the query you want i'm going to choose fetched employee data for my current one and just give it a name get employees list and you can set whatever suitable name you want test and finish and that is pretty much all there is to it of course you also need to select what keys you want to display let me just quickly select everything over here once you've done that test and save You'll get this toast which will indicate that it's been saved successfully and you're good to go once you've done that so similarly we've binded it for our table grid let's also quickly do it for our device version list for this you need to bind it to the container which is the list repeat and not the product list itself so click the list repeat go to the data and go to the connectors we're going to use a new connector and this time we want the google sheets connector and we're going to find rows because we want some particular rows from our Google Sheet uh, and not all the rows. So, for example, if I'm an employee, if someone selects my record, you want on the right hand side to display what devices I am possessing. So we just want my row and not rows for all the employees. 
So click find rows and go ahead. Select the account you have added. If you haven't added an account, you just need to click this manage Google Sheets account and you can add a new account from here by using the sign in with Google pop up and give it a relevant name. It's a simple two minute process. But once you have done that, you can just click your account and continue with it. So you'll get a lot of fields where they ask, of course, give it a decent name, get devices list and start row and row. So if you head over to my sheets, uh, I have start row as two and I have like about hundred records. So to be safe, you can put end row as thousand or a big enough number. Search column is A because I want to search on my first column, employee ID and search value is from my, it's a dynamic value from my table grid. This is where we're cross-referencing it. Uh, I don't want to search for a static value. I want to search those records which the user selects from the table grid. So now you just have to select the spreadsheet and the sheet name and we'll be good to go. So I want the device position list and sheet name. I just have a single sheet, sheet one. And if you do a test and finish, we should be good to go. Awesome. So select the columns you want here. I want columns from A to G because those are the columns I have in my sheet. E, F, G. Awesome. And just click save. Cool. Now we're good to go. But if you remember, we connected this to the list repeat and not to the individual cards inside it. So to do that, just click on the product list card. Again, in the buy data section, you get uh, for each of the options, what field you want. And now the easy part is for everything, you just need to select it as the parent controls under the repeat, get data from parent control, which is our list repeat, just select the value you want. So for example, for my image, I might want the value G where my image URL is there in the G column. So similarly for everything, you just set it up like that and we're good to go. This is a preview of how your data is going to look once binded. So looks a lot more interactive and nice. I can see in my table grid, the list of all my employee details. If I click on a name, I can see the corresponding devices possessed by that user in my device position list. Awesome, looks good and we're ready to go to the next step. Hey, if you're still watching, cheers, we're more than halfway there and almost done. So the next step is to add validations and validations are really crucial if you want to ensure that no corrupted data enters your system and everything works smoothly. So let's check how to add that. So to add validations, go to any screen you want to add validations for. I've already added some validation, but I'll show you how I've added. Go to the rules section, which you've seen me doing, and you'll see all the rules. You'll get two tabs, either rules or validations. So rules are some set of instructions you want your app to always follow. I can create, I can use this to create some in interesting mechanisms. So for example, I can create a rule saying that if the user logged in is a manager, I want to show the manager uh, updating options, editing options, deleting options. But if the user logged in is not a manager and a normal employee, then I won't allow him to update or delete information. I'll only allow him to view information. So you can use rules to create some complex and nice mechanisms like this. Validations is where we're going to play around where for each control you have, you can set up some validation. It should follow this. So for example, I have one setup for my email where I've written that my email should always contain the value at the rate and it should always end with the value.com. So uh, you can add your own custom validations like this. But adding validations is really simple. Just click add new one and then you can choose an operator equal to not equal to contains not in contains a lot of stuff. You can choose if you want to compare it against another field or a value. And in case you have a value, you can, you know, enter the value over here. In case you have a field, you can enter the field name over here and just give an error message and you can couple it with and or or to create all the complex validations you want. So that is about it. Once you set up validations for all the fields you want, 
we are good to go for example absenteeism i've set it so that it's always greater than zero salary i've set it so that it's always greater than some minimal value so set up all the validations you want and we're literally done and all we have to do is preview it so that we're happy with our application and let's do just that let's just give it a minute to load Awesome. Now that it's loaded, let's quickly check if our validations are working. I'm going to click the add button. I can see my add employee screen. And if I type in some junk email, it should hopefully throw up an error. Yep. Awesome. If I type in a salary, which is less than our hundred dollars minimum salary, it's again giving an error. So awesome. Our validations are working fine and we're good to go to the next step. So the next step is to just add some action flow so that you can get everything up and running. So to do that, again, for any control, just click on the control, click the bolt icon over here, which is highlighted actions. You'll get this action screen. I have various actions for the table grid and so on and so forth for each control. I'll get a similar section like that. So what I need to do is, so for example, table grid, when I click on the add button, I want to add a new employee. So I'll do that. I'll click the plus button over here. When someone clicks this, I want to navigate to my add employee screen. So go to add, just give it a unique name and click on finish. So awesome, that's added. So similarly, I have also created other actions for navigation. So when I click the update, custom update, I want to go to the update screen. And also when I click this add device button over here, I want to navigate to my add device screen. So that's how you set up basic action flows. Let's now quickly see how to set up the more advanced ones. So I'm going to go to my add employee screen or rather my update employee screen. And we're going to see how to update an employee or how to make the action flow to update the employee with all these details. So click on the button, click the action button and go to the usual space. We are going to go and add a server side action and we're going to choose the database we just configured and we're up updating the details so choose the update employee details query just press continue and here you see all the variables you created in the query coming back here as dynamic fields so now you just have to set up the labels of the text box and connect it with these variables so that it can all interconnect and work well so uh, just click on use these keywords and just fill up the details so i'm just going to quickly fast over it as i fill up all the labels awesome now that's done just click on continue give it an action name i'm updating employee so i'm just writing that and finish it awesome so you get two options what happens when it's a success what happens if it's a failure when it's a success let's just display a toast so that the user can get notified of it so i'm just gonna put data successfully updated and continue display success giving it a good name finish when there's a failure we of course let's display a failure toast for that i'm just gonna duplicate my success toast and change it so that it's faster data not successfully updated i'll just change the title to error and type to error as well and continue i'll change the name to display failure awesome now once it's success i also want to reset my screen or refresh my screen so that i can view the updated data so let me quickly refresh my update panel and give it a name called refresh screen nice and regardless of what happens i of course want to go back to my home screen so I'll need the navigate to control to navigate back to my admin panel and I'll give it a name, go to admin. Awesome. In just a couple of minutes, we've built a complex workflow capable of updating my SQL database. So similarly, we just set up all the other action flows. I've already done it for delete. It's the same thing. You delete an employee and if it's success, you follow the same set of rules. If it's a failure, you follow the same set of rules, what we've done just more of the same thing for device again you go to the device option go to the action flow 
and here we of course need a google sheets connector not a mysql connector but it's again the same thing just add it over there and if success follow a set of rules it's failure follow a different set of rules so now that we are done with it let's quickly preview it and see if our entire application is working finally so i'll just go back to my admin panel and click this preview button you can see that it's loaded up awesome uh, let me quickly try updating employee so let's say my first employee if i maybe go to the update section i can see some information i have smart working employee written here uh, let me change this to maybe hard working employee deserves a raise why not so if i click update you can see my success toast has popped up and once it's refreshed if you scroll and if you go for the update section again you can see the notes have been access successfully updated and even if you scroll down or you can see that notes have been updated so awesome we saw how to create a quick admin panel in mysql we cross-referenced it with our google sheets and uh, well everything works fine hope you learned something new out of it and like the video thank you and have a nice day